Today I want to explain how Ape became the most manipulated stock in history, and how this tells me that we're right and that AMC will squeeze, so stay tuned and let's make some money. And I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, I want to start by talking about how Credit Suisse is being manipulated right now, almost as heavily manipulated as Lehman was before their collapse, but how the Ape manipulation simply blows both of these out of the water. So Genjack tweeted saying Credit Suisse is so desperate for finding a lifeline of liquidity that no one is willing to give them. He said vultures are hovering over to swoop down and tear their guts out, just as they did to Lehman Brothers. Naked short sellers are working on Credit Suisse as we speak, and Credit Suisse is overwhelmed. This article talks about how yesterday Credit Suisse's five-year credit default swaps, a gauge of credit risk, rose to record highs while its stock hit a fresh low after the bank's attempts to reassure markets on its financial stability backfired. The CEO touted the bank's capital levels and liquidity, but also acknowledged the firm was facing a critical moment. And as I mentioned in my video yesterday, it's important to remember the pricing of these credit default swaps can only be impacted by hedge funds and other institutions. The pricing of these CDSs can't be impacted by social media or Twitter, or by retail investors. Retail investors simply can't trade credit default swaps on most trading platforms and trading apps, and therefore the only way the price is actually affected or goes up and goes down is due to hedge fund trading. The reason why these credit default swaps increased wasn't due to all the rumours circulating on Twitter, it was because hedge funds are genuinely believing that Credit Suisse is going bankrupt. And these hedge funds are simply adding to these worries and fueling these worries by not only increasing the prices of the CDSs and dropping the price of the stock, they're also naked shorting Credit Suisse as well. I read a comment saying that some Credit Suisse ETFs and some of the old Lehman bonds were set on the Regulation SHO threshold securities list only a few weeks ago. That means that Credit Suisse and Credit Suisse's ETFs are incurring failed to delivers, likely on a large scale. Now on top of this, Lehman's CEO Richard Fold spoke on Lehman's bankruptcy back in the 2008 crisis. He reminded Congress the issue was bigger than just the Lehman bankruptcy, and he also noted the impact of naked short selling and the media lies fueling the crisis. Richard Fold clearly believes that naked short selling massively amplified the 2008 crisis, and therefore is likely amplifying Credit Suisse's demise. Naked short sellers and media lies are likely not only speeding up the collapse of Credit Suisse, but also amplifying the blow up as well. Therefore, naked short sellers are likely adding to the market crash and helping to fuel the economic crisis and coming market collapse and recession. Now, I don't want to play this full Richard Ford interview, but obviously I'll leave the link to it down in the description below so you can hear for yourself a layman CEO speaking on naked shorts. But I do want to touch on this due diligence that speaks about the number of FTDs incurred by Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers during the 08 crisis, but how Ape blows this manipulation out of the water. Now this comes from an article posted on the Rolling Stone news website that says on Tuesday March 11th 2008, somebody but nobody knows who made one of the craziest bets Wall Street has ever seen. It says the mystery figure spent $1.7 million on a series of options, gambling that shares in the vulnerable investment bank Bear Stearns would lose more than half of their value in 9 days or less. Now over the next week, the Bear Stearns stock fell from $63 per share down to $2 per share, and that lucky mystery person woke up on the morning of March 17th, having made 159 times his money, or roughly $270 million. Now one of the main things that helped to push the Bear Stearns stock down so fast was the sheer number of failed delivers. And I've also just realised that Moomoo is one of the only trading platforms that doesn't have deep ties, deep links and deep connections to Citadel. Moomoo obviously isn't owned by Citadel, they're not majority owned by BlackRock, they don't have ex-Citadel employees or ex-major bank employees sat on their board, they don't have ties to the mainstream media and they don't accept payment for order flow. Moomoo is one of the only trading platforms that is completely separate from this corrupt financial system. And right now, Moomoo is currently giving away 15 free shares worth up to a whopping total of $30,000. All you have to do is sign up to Moomoo using the link in the description below. It said on Tuesday, March 11th, there was 201,000 shares of Bear that had failed to deliver. The very next day, the number of Phantom shares leapt to 1.2 million shares. 
but by the close of trading that Friday, the number had passed 2 million. And when the market reopened the following Monday, it soared to 13.7 million FTDs in less than a week. And in less than that same week, the number of counterfeit shares in Bear Stearns had jumped nearly 70-fold. Now, obviously, 13.7 million FTDs in a single day is a large number of FTDs. More FTDs than AMC has ever seen, and more FTDs than GameStop has seen as well. Now, that massive number of FTDs was used to push the price of Bear Stearns down from $63 per share, down past $30 and below, before Bear was sold for $2 per share. Don't forget, that's 13.7 million FTDs, not to push the price down of a small penny stock, but to push the price down of one of the world's largest investment banks. But when we look at the number of FTDs in Lehman Brothers, we can see the FTDs in Bear Stearns was fairly small fry. On June 27th, 2008, an avalanche of undelivered shares in Lehman Brothers started piling up in the market. On June 27th, there were 705,000 fails. On June 30th, that number increased to 814,000, and by July 1st, 1.5 million. But over the next few weeks, that increased on September 10th to 5.8 million FTDs. The day after, 22.6 million shares, and the day after that, 32.8 million. During that time, the Lehman Brothers stock fell from $50 per share down to simply 21 cents, and the company declared bankruptcy. Therefore, 32.87 million FTDs was enough to drop the price of Lehman Brothers down from $50 all the way to 20 cents. Again, Lehman Brothers wasn't a small penny stock company or a fresh startup. Lehman Brothers was one of the world's largest investment banks. But when we look at the number of FTDs in Ape, we can see that 32 million FTDs in Lehman Brothers is actually still fairly small fry, and Ape blows that manipulation out of the water. Ape has seen 43.4 million FTDs, 38.6, 24.6, and 11.4 million. Since that time, the number of FTDs has actually decreased down from 5.6 million all the way to around 3 or 400,000. But I do think it's important to remember that I don't think these FTDs have been resolved or closed out of. I think these FTDs have simply been hidden. Now, the massive amount of ape manipulation clearly blows the manipulation in Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns out of the water. But how has ape held on so well in comparison? Bear Stearns fell from $60 down to $30 and eventually down to $2 per share. Lehman Brothers fell from $50 down to only 20 cents. So how is Ape holding up so relatively well, only falling from around $6 per share down to around $2 to $3? Obviously, social media was much less prevalent back in the day of Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers, and Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers were technically insolvent companies, whereas AMC and Ape are thriving. On top of that, Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns didn't have an army of apes behind them supporting the stock, buying the stock, and supporting the company. I think Hang Loose also asks an excellent question, which is how do so many shares or FTDs get covered, considering the price has continued to decline? How have so many real shares actually been located and bought to close out of those FTDs while the price is declining in such a short space of time? If on the day of release, 43 million real ape shares couldn't be located and therefore 43 million FTDs incurred, how have 43 million real shares been found in that time period when apes have continued to buy? Hang Lu said it's important to remember there hasn't yet been any dilution happening when most of those 43 million FTDs were covered, as there was only the 516 million initial shares distributed. Demand for real or new ape shares was also elevated due to brokers not having enough shares or not having enough units to deliver the dividend to all of the retail investors. On top of this, retail investors were also trying to buy more shares of Ape or more Ape IOUs, and therefore the number of FTDs should have increased and not decreased. Don't forget, while an additional 425 million Ape shares have been authorised to be sold, as far as we're aware, none of these shares have actually been sold yet. On top of this, as Hang Loose points out, there's no option chain for Ape specifically to hide those married and divorced puts or to hide those FTDs in. But it's very possible these FTDs have been hidden in total return swaps, aka such as those total return swaps that Credit Suisse is still holding. On top of this, just to show how much the Ape manipulation blows the manipulation of Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns out of the water, I think Spence gives an excellent explanation. 
He said this time around, Facebook, Netflix, Google, and almost every big name tech stock has been destroyed over the last nine months by naked short selling. These major blue chip tech stocks have been destroyed over the last nine months, trying to generate additional liquidity for these hedge funds to divert to their naked short positions. These hedge funds have obviously needed to stump up more liquidity and more capital to maintain their margin requirements and avoid being margin called on their AMC, GameStop and Ape short positions. Therefore, they've been selling off these major blue chip tech stocks for the last nine months, destroying these companies in the process just to support their AMC and Ape manipulation. He said this has led to the massive over leveraging on stocks like AMC, GameStop, Vinco Ventures and now the Ape preferred shares as well. He said this has caused funds to force liquidate tech massively to meet their margin requirements to avoid margin calls and to support and prop up their short positions. He said the market makers took advantage of lack of consequences for regulatory failures and the SEC and FINRA have allowed this for years. Back in 2008, the only companies that really ended up being destroyed were Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns due to the manipulation. But this time round, not only have they attempted to destroy AMC, Ape and GameStop, but in the process they've destroyed half of the S&P 500. Now you may have also seen this video from the Wall Street Journal speaking about how the Ape share issue was immoral, but as unusually points out, this is juicy AF. The Wall Street Journal employee that made this video used to actually work at Credit Suisse as the head of EMA research. As unusually tweeted, he said, what exquisite timing. The dude is obviously trying to help out his hedge fund and institute buddies back at Credit Suisse. It turns out this guy even makes YouTube videos supporting Citadel. He recently posted a video titled How Citadel and Wall Street Triumphed Over Retail Investors. This video obviously talks about the AMC and GameStop squeeze and he believes that Citadel actually triumphed over us retail investors. Clearly this guy is a massive supporter of these hedge funds and these market makers like Citadel and is doing anything he can to convince us to sell. Again this further supports my theory that we are right and that AMC will squeeze and that AMC and Ape are being manipulated more heavily than any other stock in history. And it's got to the crazy point where this has now led to asset managers including BlackRock and Schroders to limit institutional investor withdrawals. We've seen Citadel limiting withdrawals, but now we're seeing funds like BlackRock limiting those same withdrawals as well. This is due to a number of pension funds trying to withdraw their money from BlackRock, potentially causing a bank run or a margin call on BlackRock, therefore they're limiting withdrawals. I think this goes to show not just how close Credit Suisse are to going bankrupt, but how close even BlackRock are to being margin called as well. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.